Hey everyone, I'm Spencer. I'm Laura, and we're married with board games. Long before the sparkling and romantic vampires of a certain book and movie franchise that must not be named, there was a pale and hideous vampire called Nosferatu. In the movie Nosferatu, a vampire is stalking the town of Transylvania and bites his victims to feast on their blood. Sound familiar? If so, it's because it's essentially an unauthorized adaptation of Bram Stoker's Dracula. And speaking of adaptations, the game Nosferatu is a loose adaptation of both Dracula and Nosferatu. So how does the tension of being hunted by a vampire play out in a tiny little card game? Let's take a look. Nosferatu is a bluffing deduction card game from Eagle Griffin Games for five to eight players. Originally published in 2013, the game pits a team of vampire hunters against the vampire and his servant Renfield. But when the game begins, players only know who Renfield is. The rest of the roles remain hidden. Hunters have to work together to cast five rituals or deduce who the vampire is and drive his stake through his heart. Nice accent. Thanks. Renfield works with the vampire to help him deliver five bites before the hunters accomplish one of their goals. Let's crack this one open and see what's inside. So the box has been cracked open. This is everything that fits inside that tiny little box over there. First, I want to draw your attention to down here, the roll cards. Over here, you have hunters. There's nothing special about them that just says you're on the hunter team. And over here is the vampire card and Renfield. What's gonna happen is everyone as a group is gonna decide who Renfield is, and then everybody else will either be the vampire or a hunter. So you take the vampire card along with however many other players there are, and then mix those together, and then Renfield gets to decide who the vampire is. So he'll pass out the vampire card to somebody secretly, and then he'll pass out the hunter cards to everyone else. No one knows who the vampire is except for Renfield, and then the vampire, of course, will know who Renfield is, so then they know they're working together. The next thing I want to draw your attention to are the clock cards. Now you take these cards, and it depends on how many people are playing, um, and you'll mix in however many night cards there are and the dawn card, and you'll mix those up, and at the end of every turn, you draw a dawn card or you draw a clock card, and then the round keeps going if it's night, but if you draw a dawn card, somewhere in there, the round is over. And whoever's turn it was when the dawn card was chosen, they get to take the stake card, and they had the opportunity to drive the stake into a vampire's heart. Basically what's happening is they're accusing somebody of being the vampire. Of course, if they do that, and they're wrong, the hunters lose and the evil team wins. So you don't want to do that until you're absolutely sure you know who the vampire is. The other cards are the library cards, and those are made up of three different kinds. There are the spell cards, there are the bite cards, and then there are newspaper cards. Now, the newspaper cards are junk. Um, if you have those in your hand, you might have to play them, but they don't help at all. The bite cards, you only want to play those if you're a vampire, because if the vampire gets five bite cards on the table, the vampire wins. And then the hunters want to all try to play these cards. So in a round, before the round ends, if every player that plays down a card plays one of these, they get to cast a ritual. And once the players cast five rituals, they win. Um, each of these rituals, when they cast them, have a different ability. One of them is to make a player reveal who their role is. Um, so I guess that'd be a good thing if they reveal that they are vampire, because then it'd be real easy to win after that. And um, then another one is to make a player get rid of one of their bites. They all have various abilities, and I won't go into that. And then there's your rule book over there. And so that's everything that's inside of that tiny little box. All right, so let's talk over some of the things we like about the game. Um, first of all, uh, the time to play the game is really short. Mm -hmm. You know, well, com I mean, comparatively. It's not like super duper short, mm -hmm. but like you said, comparatively, especially for other games that we like to play, mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's quick. You know, it's, it's not as quick probably as a one night Ultimate Werewolf because that's one night. Mm -hmm. Right, so it's it, it's real quick, but it's basically what eight minutes. <laughs> yeah, but you know, if you're playing something like uh, the Resistance or 
um, regular werewolf, it's quicker than that. So yeah, it's about 20 minutes to, to play through. And so we like that about the game. You don't want to go too long on a game like that. Right. Um, um, it's also compact. Yes, it's very small. And so it's easy to, it's portable. <laughs> mm -hmm. So not only is it portable, you can put it in your pocket, um, your purse, if you carry one of those, your fanny pack, I guess. Um, <laughs> but the, the footprint on the table, because the cards are, you know, they're, they're pretty small. They don't take up a whole lot of space on the table. You right. don't have to throw a lot of cards down in front of you. So it is, it's a good, you could play it on a card table, mm -hmm. um, as, as small as it is. Um, speaking of the cards, let's talk about the artwork. What do oh, you think yeah. of the artwork? I, I really like it, um, especially as I'm looking over here at the little rules pamphlet, mm -hmm. and it brings to mind those old Hollywood horror films, mm -hmm. and um, and I, I just I really dig that. Yeah, it's, it's, it's really cool. There, it's it's very thematic. You know, it's it's dark, um, shadowy, uh, goes great with the theme. Um, so yeah, we we really like the artwork. Yes. Um, and and because of the way that the game plays, you know, it is a hidden role game. Um, but it doesn't work the same way as a werewolf, something like that, where each role has or a resistance. Or resistance, where like in werewolf, you know, each role has a special movement, and and you're doing those um, on your turn. This, you, it's more of a team game where you're working together. Um, it, it just, I think, part of us, it, it it took a little bit for us to get the hang of the game, just because we were so used to playing those other style of games. Mm -hmm. We were expecting it to behave one way, mm -hmm. and then we had to say, no, 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 this is a completely different game. Yes. So we'd say it's a good alternative. Oh, definitely. To those yeah, other it, games. Yeah, it's not like those others. So right. Don't be, don't be hesitant of that. If I already own Resistance or right, um, what is the other? Avalon? Yeah, Avalon. Or um, I already own those. Why yeah. would I need? No. It's different. It's, it's a really good alternative. Yeah. Um, now, we did say it was, once you get the hang of it, the, the game gameplay is easy. Um, for the hunters especially, just figuring out how to play is what I'm trying to say. But if you're playing as Renfield, which I did on all the games that we played, mm -hmm. it was really hard because, you know, you, you don't want to give away who the vampire is. But at the same time... You've got to get those bites out You've got to get the bites out. And you want to deflect the blame. Yes. But if you're, for me, what I was having a hard time of doing was saying, is trying to say, ah, ah, it could be this person, it really could be this person. But that doesn't make sense because why would I be giving away who it is? Then we would automatically go, oh, well, if Renfield's trying to tell us this is them. Right. Because in my mind, I'm, no. <laughs> I'm thinking werewolf. Oh, it's not me, it's them. It's no. I have to just completely change my way of thinking. And so it's, it's really hard to be Renfield to convince a whole team of people that it's not a certain person, but without being too direct about it. Mm -hmm. So that was really difficult, but a fun challenge. I enjoyed it. And, and I can't wait to, for you to have that opportunity or someone else to have that opportunity. Um, there were a few things we had a, a few problems with. Um, first of all, you wanna talk about the card backs? Yeah, let's do it. Okay, so um, of the cards, there are clock cards and there are library cards. They are different cards, but, but they have the exact same back, and everything comes in this little box. Mm -hmm. And so, that is a hassle of having to go through your box and find well, those different cards. And, and not only that, when you're drawing, uh, when you go to, yeah, on when your turn to draw, it's like, oh, which, oh, which one's which? yeah. And, and and granted, one deck is smaller than the other, but when you start going through the clock deck, not the clock deck, the, the, uh, library, the library deck, deck and it gets smaller, you do kind of forget, okay, which deck is which deck. It It's not a huge thing, but it, it would have made it. It wouldn't hurt no. to do a different back for right. the, the other, clock cards. The roll cards have different backs. Um, the, uh, the ritual cards have different backs. So it, it, it would have been nice to see different backs for both those decks, but it's not really going to hamper yeah, your enjoyment I mean, of the playable. game. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then also the rules. I think it was maybe some things lost in translation, possibly, because this game wasn't originally an English game. Um, there are just some things that aren't exactly spelled out. 100%. I, I felt like I kind of had to infer some things. It did take a couple of playthroughs for us to finally go, mm. okay, this must be how it's supposed to be done mm -hmm. because that's just, it's more logical. Right. Yeah. And to me, when I read rules, it, it really helps to say, you can't do this or do not do this or you must do this. Mm -hmm. And things and, are more inferred and right. implied. Yeah, in things, yeah. yeah. So um, 
once and that you, does sound like a translation issue yeah, to me. Yeah, so, but once you figure it out, it really isn't a difficult game. So, yeah. just all that to say, with as simple as the card game is, we shouldn't have had as much trouble as we did initially trying to learn the game. I don't know, maybe, maybe we're dumb. Speak for yourself. Okay, I will. Maybe I'm dumb. But uh, overall, you know, I, I think the bottom line for this game is it's, it's a great small game mm -hmm. and it really is worth taking a look at if you do like those kinds, those styles of games of deduction and, and hidden roles. In a heavily saturated corner of the board game market, Nosferatu offers enough differences to stand alone as its own game. In fact, it's a great alternative to more mainstream hidden role deduction games like Werewolf. Nosferatu seems to have flown under the radar for many people, and for the price tag, its portable size, and time it takes to play, this would be a great addition for any gamer who likes this style of game. We're going to box this one up for now. Feel free to reach out to us with any questions or comments in the section below, or tweet to us and find us on Instagram at Married with BG. Thanks for watching, and I'm pretty sure Lara is a vampire, so I'm gonna try to cast a ritual. Either that or I think I have a stake lying around here somewhere. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.